This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Baruch Hashem. Very, very happy, and it's a very powerful night. There is a, a, a song, a Jewish song, um, and saying, Gdulatenu utif artenu yegale meshiach tzidkenu. Gdulatenu, it's our greatness. Vetifartenu, it's our glory. Meshiach tzidkenu, the Messiah, he will reveal. Yegale, he will reveal it. Mashiach, he will come and will reveal our greatness and our glory. In the darkness of the exile, we are all going with our low self-esteem, with our heads down, broken and sad and depressed and criticized by society, by the world. On, on every street sign there is another supermodel or an athlete that is like showing to you how far you are from his level of imagination mm -hmm. and in the end of the day the person start losing his inner connection his inner world and the world is reflecting the kingship of heaven the kingship of earth is showing us the real condition of the heavenly kingship of the Creator. The Creator Himself, like we already spoke about it a few times, created a system, and that's the world. Those are the worlds, and soon we're going to understand a little bit about the difference between the world and the worlds. What are the worlds? We're not talking about different galaxies. We're talking about different worlds inside this world that we know. But the Creator Himself, He created the world for one cause, to reveal His mercy. There was no one there before with Him in those ancient days to show His mercy on, because there were no creations, there were no children, there was no people nothing. Therefore he created a curtain, that's the physical aspect of this world, and to the inside of creation, to the center, like that you are alive from within, your life is not the external experiences, the drinks that you drink. You're alive because you have pulse because from inside there is a life spirit that gives you power to see, to hear, to talk, to listen. So like that the person and every life creation, a flower, everything receives each, its energy from within, so also the whole wide world receives its energy from within. And which energy it is? It's the life itself. And the life itself is Hashem Himself, the creator of the world. He is Chaya Chaim, the, the, the living life, the, the life, the life that is alive itself. He is the one that lives the long life, the real life. Now, He sent Himself into that dark place behind the curtain into physicality and now he is that life spirit but divided and 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 constricted into the forms and into the figures of his creations so now his spirit is waving in the trees and in the waves of the sea, and in the wind, and the animals, and, and flies, butterflies, and all birds. Everything holds a certain amount of light. Now like that electricity, the same power 
of the energy of electricity will create a different effect, will work differently on a radio and on a refrigerator or on a MacBook, but it's the same energy. So the same energy of the creator finds itself being expressed in a different way inside the different creations because their structure is different. So people are different and they are different than animals and animals are different than birds and birds are different than flowers and f from fish, whatever. But still it's the same source of life, Hashem Himself, the name, the Creator Himself, that sent Himself, His own Spirit, because there was no other Spirit. It was only Him, the Infinity itself. Himself sent Himself into behind the curtain, into that place. Now, when He Himself been trapped in that physicality, something happened. What happened? Something that never happened before. Because before, there was never a world to capture and to hold Hashem inside. Because it was all endless. It was all infinity. Eternity from, from ancient times, before time. It was always there. But in that moment, forgetfulness came down to the world. To who? Who it's attacking Hashem Himself. Because it's Hashem Himself that is inside of us, because the source of life is the Spirit of Heaven. And that same Spirit of Heaven is Heaven itself. It's Hashem. Because there was no one else except of Him. And when He sent His light, His breath, His air, His life into this creation, He gave His Spirit. He sent Himself into this world. But when He been dressed in different people, in different forms, in different creations, so they became individuals. Now everyone is holding that power for Himself and recognize Himself as a human being, as a creation, with His needs, with His power. That's the forgetfulness. That's the power of Shichecha. That we forgot who we are. Because you think now, all right, I have only this amount of power, only this amount of battery in my phone, in my device, in, 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 and I have a mission, and I must eat because that's my way to charge my battery, and I need to drink, and I need to have a house, and I need to buy, and I need to go, and I need to get married, and I also need to enjoy life, all right? So like, I'm, 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 I'm uh, you're all wrong. You, miss, you, 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 you don't get the fact that you're not a radio. You have the merit to channel. You're not a television. The energy of electricity is coming through you out to the world. And now you can shine. The merit is to have the ability to express the godliness that's been given to you. That's been offered to you. That you've been blessed with. But it's not you. You, who that you really are, is something godly. Is not a person. Is not an individual. That individual person that you recognize in front of the mirror is only the prison. That's the cage of the spirit of the soul that is trapped inside of you. So when you recognize yourself as a form, as a figure, as a body, so then you are falling into that place of forgetfulness. You don't remember. But when you relate yourself to your soul and you start going deep back into who you are, means go into that inner search of finding your true self and not to fall into the criticism and the definitions of your body, of your height, of your accent, of your culture, of your nation, of your gender, of whatever. You're going to be defined by, just by throwing yourself deep, 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 deep inside into your spiritual world and over there trying to connect yourself now. For that you need to be a real rider, a real warrior, a real soldier that is able to move away to the sides all the distractions. Like all food, okay, couldn't care less anymore about food. All drinks, okay, couldn't care less more about drinks. 
women, houses, buildings, financials, health issues, ups and downs, humiliations, the, like the, all kinds of destructions that might happen in the life of a person. All the obstacles, all the things that will challenge you to lose your inner connection with your mind, are your enemy. So for that a person must be on, 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 on watch, on guard, 24-7. Every moment of your life you need to ask yourself, alright, where am I holding? What am I doing? Like, am I falling in traps right now? Do I see people? Do I see situations? Do I feel the space? Do, like, Am I being affected by the environment? Are people affecting me? Now there's food. I'm, I'm, is it arousing me? Am I being pulled by something? Or that I am who that I am? And in that moment that you come back to be who you are, you become one with Hashem. When Moses asked Hashem, who are you? Like how am I going to tell them who you are? So Hashem told them, I am who that I am. That was Hashem's answer. Now when you realize that Hashem is just who that He is, who is Hashem? Hashem is Hashem. Like now, okay, you're going to experience a certain section of who that Hashem is because the ocean is like a fish, a free fish that can swim wherever he likes, wherever he wants. He won't swim all the ocean, even if he will live 200 years. The size of him is limiting him to a certain amount of certain distance that he's able to grab, to see. He will swim from one coast to the other. Oh, wow, it's a huge achievement for a, for a tiny fish. All right, He's going to swim for 200 years from one shot to the other. Okay, and that's it. Like, he won't cross it to, to other directions. He won't go to the depths of the... Let's say that he decided to go all the way to the bottom. All right, so he, in his lane, he's going to go all the way to the bottom. And that's it. Like, the, at le over there, it's going to finish. That's how much he's able to, to, to grab because of his limitations. Now, also a person, a human being. And that's the world. You live your life in your world. You have your world. You are limited to a certain lane, to a certain path because of your physicality. Your physicality is holding you, limiting, limiting you to a certain path. You are born to a certain family, you live in a certain area, you have certain friends, certain people you know, and that's it. Certain people follow you on Facebook, on YouTube, and you follow the rest, and that's it. And you cannot achieve more than that. Why? Because you're trapped in a body. But when you are going back into your mind and you move away from physicality a little bit and you start meditating and I can explain to you ways of meditation that will open your eyes but I don't know like if people desire that because the world is so desiring like there is Coke and Pepsi and Sprite and Fanta out there and there is so many kinds of scotch and whiskey and like oh you can have so much fun and today in our generation you have so many kinds of weed and it's legit and you can smoke your life out and like you're so free that like to tell people to meditate like come on I can have a joint and that's it like let's get over with it but then you lose life because you waste your life on external things instead of building an inner structure, a stable bridge that will uplift you to dimensions that are beyond. And you can live your life in that way, like our ancestors, like our forefathers, like the real righteous people. That they don't have a share in this world at all. They're fighting for their share in the world to come. And their share in the world to come is not their reward on their good actions. They couldn't care less about being rewarded. They just want to bring all their children to that place. They want to bring the world into that place. That the wide world, that all the people, that all the animals, that all the living creations will experience the godliness that's been exposed to them. 
they're realizing, hey, there's such a blessing, such a gift. Now, it's mine for sure. I already received it. When it's been revealed to me, I realize that it's there, so it's mine. But who cares about me, about myself? Look at them, look at her, look at him, look at they, they need help. And then those righteous ones are throwing themselves to the water to save the rest of us. And when we want to become like those righteous ones, we need to understand what's the, what's the method, what's the way. The way to do it is to become that man of God, that person of God, to reveal the godliness to others in a way that they will relate to it and will be able to learn from you. And when you're opening their eyes, you're being exposed to the worlds, and not only to one world. What does it mean? You start seeing through the eyes of your students, not necessarily students, of those people or animals, those ones that are being affected by you in a positive way. In that way, for an example, that if you supported the person, you helped him, you gave him money to go for school, and he now went and graduated, and he became something with the money that you gave him. Now, his success is your success as well. When he graduated, when he <coughs> got that job, when he succeeded, when he got that title, whatever, his happiness belongs to you. You're going to hear about it from him. You're going to be in that party. You're going to be invited. Or even if you won't, just the fact that you know that he finished something that you helped him to accomplish, it will give you something to your heart. It's like that you graduated in a way. And his success is your success. Your children's success is your success. You see them growing and blooming and succeeding, getting married, having children, able to pay their expenses, living life, going vacations. All right, you're happy. Why you're happy? Because you have a way to experience their joy and their success because that you supported their journey, because you helped them to achieve it. If you're going to see someone that you never heard of, that you never met in your life, and you're going to hear that he's on a yacht, that he's going on boat, and he's flying, that he has a private jet, and he has a house on the mountains, and one in the lake, like, it won't give you no joy, no happiness, because like, all right, it's his happiness. I, I'm not, not connected to me. I'm not invited to his parties. I'm not invited to his, those meals. Like, uh, What's my connection to that? The reason that you're not connected to that is that really you are disconnected from him. You never influence on him. You never helped him in any way. But if all of his success came out of your labor because you helped him to build himself and to achieve those things. So every party that he will make in his house will be part of your happiness. You will have a share in that thing. So now those examples are physical. But in a spiritual aspect, when a person is doing good, when a person is coming closer to his real inner self and his soul starts shining, so that light is affecting the world spiritually. It gives other people, other creations, the ability to recognize their own true potential, spiritual potential. And they become your students even if you never met them, never spoke with them. Just by walking in the street and your soul is shining, you're happy. And you don't need to go with a huge smile or to jump and dance on cars. You just need to be complete with yourself. And the way you walk when you're a believer is shining and changing the energy around you. And people that will just cross the street in front of you or behind you in that path that you walked, their life are about to change even if you're not aware to that. They are crossing your footsteps, they are going in your lane, and the light of your soul is already destroying darkness around you. Darkness that is spiritual. You're not going in the middle of the night and there is a light bubble around you that is shining. But spiritually there is. You are well protected. 
The godly light of heaven is shining upon you and healing your environment. And people that are talking to you, that are asking you even simple questions like what's the price of the bread? What's how much? What do you choose that milk? Why are you buying that pasta? They're going to ask you that in the grocery store and your answer will put a spark of faith in their hearts that will change their life forever in an uplifting and amazing and inspiring way that you can never recognize and see. But the Creator Himself, He knows exactly. And He's using you for those things. And when you're doing that, and those people's life are changing, are opening, you start experiencing the worlds of your students. Means that you can see through their eyes and not necessarily to see what did they see while they're walking. It's not that you're now going to sit in your living room and he's going to go to the grocery store and you're going to look through his eyes on the shelves. It's not something so narrow-minded. It's much deeper than that. What that you will achieve is his spiritual developments. Means that when he will grow spiritually, when he will be more mature emotionally, when he will be closer to the truth, all his conclusions, all his deep understandings will be part of your understanding. Suddenly you are growing and understanding things in much wider ways and aspects and you don't even know what happens with you. You're just growing and your wisdom is expanding and suddenly you have deep understanding on topics that you never learned and you just bring those understandings from within without even knowing where is it coming from. But it's coming from the seeds that you planted a few months ago, a few years ago, that you watered, that you supported, that you loved, that you affected on them in a positive way. And those worlds can open your mind to that place that you will become completely one, united with the Creator. Now the Creator, He is that one that is experiencing all the worlds in the same time. Now you experience your own world. And when you are growing, you can experience a little bit more. Maybe 3, 4, 5, 7, 17, 200 worlds are included in your light, in your soul. Of students, of family members, of people that you came in touch with and you spoke with and you inspired and it's growing and growing and you are growing and your soul is shining in many places in the same time but think about those fish that swims in the sea think about those deers that are walking on grass in the fields think about animals in tibet in 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 quebec in, in, in different locations in the world, in Jordan, in Asia, in China, in Japan. Like, what's your connection with them? When a person is growing spiritually to such high levels that really he nullifies himself completely and he doesn't need things for himself and he's only praying on the creation and on the creator himself to be, reve himself to be revealed in that time all the creation becomes to be like his children and he starts understanding things in wider and wider ways perspective that his perspective is is getting like so gigantic that he can understand things in aspects that the normal person will never understand what it's all about the creator himself he is the source of life inside all of the creations king solomon for an example he was able to understand the spirit of animals of trees of birds of fish he was able to communicate with the wide world why because he was in the aspect of mashiach because he was in that aspect that he was like only god himself dressed in his body and that's why his name was king shlomo 
And they explained on the name Shlomo that the m- w- meaning of the word Shlomo is Melech Shehashalom Shelo, like the king that his name is Shalom, peace. That the Creator's name is Shalom, and Shlomo, he owned him. He owned Hashem. He cleaned himself so much, and he was in that role, in that position, in that job. To be that one to represent godliness in the world. And he wanted to do it with all his heart. So he became the wisest person on earth. Why? Because he threw all of his desires and his lusts behind his back. And he couldn't care less about himself anymore. And he was just willing to do Hashem's will. And therefore he enjoyed the blessing of heaven to be able to see through the eyes of those ones that he affected in a positive way by his good actions and deeds. Now, to think to ourselves that those high levels belongs only to King Solomon, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Because from and mandarin trees and apple trees only apples will grow only mandarins will grow from an apple tree you will never see mandarins coming out to the world and when you look deep into the roots of your soul to your legacy where you came from from which branch from which family even if you're not Jewish even if you don't know if you are from the holy tribes of Israel even if you don't know who you are still if you will look deep into your spiritual tree, into your inner connection, you will find yourself that you are coming from an ancient, important family with a lot of respect, with a lot of knowledge, and with a lot of importance. And when you're going to understand that, you will start recognizing the qualities of your ancestors in you. Because from an apple tree, only apples coming out even after thousands of generations. There is no difference. If that apple brought out, apple tree brought out apples and you seed and plant that apple, in the next generation it will be the same apple tree. It will be the same apple. And even after 500 times of picking the fruit and seeding those grains in the ground, you're going to stay with the same species, with the same kind, with the same apple, with the same fruit, because it's coming from the same source. And the blessing that had been given to Abram, to Isaac, to Jacob, that all families on earth will be blessed by their merit because of their good action, actions, that is a blessing that we just can't sense. We are just like too blind to feel or to believe in. But that is the blessing that is about to be revealed in the Redemption Day. And people today in our generation are so blind that even if they're talking about redemption, even if they're, they like claim to believe and like they still have hope, unfortunately that hope is coming because of our poverty. Like I don't know I'm going to pay my rent. I hope Mashiach will come soon. Like, I don't know what's going to happen with my shidduch, how I'm going to get married, what's going to happen, will I have children or not. I truly hope Mashiach will come already. Because of your poverty, because of your lackings, and you don't want to deal with your lackings, you don't want to ask Hashem, like, all right, tell me the truth. What's going on with my life? Can I solve my problems? Can I fight? Can I save that person's life? Can I save my own life? Is there a way for me to climb to heaven? Am I able to become spiritual? Can I lose weight? Can I be healthy? Can I be rich? Can I buy that house? Instead of really confronting Hashem, not going and thinking, oh, maybe I can steal, maybe I can uh, um, uh, ask for charity, maybe I can ask my parents. Instead of finding external solutions to your problems, really to confront the truth, taking responsibility on life and start fighting and fixing whatever needs to be fixed, emotional problems, horrible life patterns from childhood, past trauma, horrible manners, bad behaviors, 
addictions to to horrible things all those things can be solved when you are facing your spiritual source of energy you start using your spiritual skills and powers that have been given to you you're going to win in every war but people choose to stay lazy and to say no look me come on who am I like I don't have a chance like I'm, I have students that I'm talking to them for years on certain topics and I see that I'm scratching the outside layer and like they don't let me in like I can beg I can knock on their doors I can go to their houses like I did those things I did those things I had a friend in Jerusalem that I felt like he he was close to do tshuva and was really like about to, to change his life, I, 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 I decided that every morning before I go to learn, I drive for 45 minutes to the place that he lived, a certain village close to Jerusalem, and I went to his house and I was calling 20 times every morning while I'm driving to wake him up because he was still asleep after I took my kids to school already and everything was perfect with me and I'm driving now 45 minutes for almost two months every morning I would go to his house 45 minutes drive to his house 45 minutes back to the place we were learning at and I would drag him out of bed putting him in the car and driving with him and then praying with him at 9, 9 30, 10 depends in traffic and then praying with him, giving up on my minyan that I wanted to pray with a minyan in, in ten in a synagogue, giving up on another two hours of being able to sit and learn Torah or doing whatever I needed in that day. I sacrificed those two hours every day to help him. And I drove, so like, all right, I did it. And in the end of the day, I really helped him. And after a while, they moved to Jerusalem. And like, I affect on that person in a very positive way. But to tell you that completely, that I was able really to redeem him completely and to bring him to my place. Here, the fact is that he's not standing here by my side and supporting my... Like, he respects me. He still has love for me. He learned something from me. He achieved something for me. But to say that I brought him to my place, to my level, I don't know. Like the answer is no. I was not able. I was able only to give him a real opportunity to choose life. But what he will do with it was still in his hands. And it's also in your hands. And you need to understand it. That it's in your hands. Your true potential and your spiritual achievements are in your hands. And mine is in my hands. Even if people gonna stand on mountains and gonna curse and gonna scream and gonna shout, they won't be able to affect me and to stop me. Even if rabbis will freak out because of my existence, even if huge people, gigantic, I don't know what, will lose their minds, they won't be able to touch me with their finger. Why? Because I am the creation of Hashem. And the Creator Himself, He gives me life. And as long as He gives me life, no one can take my life. Even if He fell into that imagination that He can. Even if he thinks that he's a murderer or that he's strong or that he's powerful, he lives in a fantasy, in a world of imagination. He thinks that he has the ability. But when he will try to do something, he will understand how empty-handed, how weak, how, 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 wh which loser he is. Because he's trying to fight, not with me. He's trying to fight with the truth. He's trying to fight with Hashem. Now you need to understand that when you're facing your own fears, your own low self-esteem, when you are trying to do something and you're not waking up and you're not able to achieve that thing, you want to learn, you want to succeed, you want to go and do something big, something huge, something high, and you don't understand yet how in the world you can achieve that thing, it's time for you to remind yourself that you should live your life on a spiritual path, on a spiritual scale, on a spiritual line, 
and not on a physical one, means that if you, for an example, heard that it's very important to wake up early in the morning for you to pray early, before sunrise or with sunrise, all right, it's a great idea, you heard about it. When you try to do it, you find yourself too tired in those hours. And even if you were able to wake up and to kick yourself out of bed, you see that it's damaging your noons, it's damaging your work, it's damaging your evenings, it's damaging your family life, it's damaging the rest of your things that you're obligated to do every day. So you're facing an, a conflict, a problem. What should I do? I heard that the mornings are so important, but I'm not able to do that. You heard that you need to keep Shabbat. You heard that you need to eat kosher. You heard that you, I don't know what, people want to convert and they desire to convert and to become Jewish. And there is no court, Jewish court in their town, in their area, in their state even. Okay, what can you do? You're stuck, right? You know where you're stuck? You're stuck in your mind. That's where you're stuck. You're stuck in your mind because you think that your salvation will come from this world. You think that your salvation will come from the synagogue. You think that your salvation will come through the kosher food, from Shabbat, physical Shabbat. You don't understand at all that the blessing is a heavenly blessing. When you desire something, you earn that thing. When you want to accomplish something, that will is already the power to pull that bounty and to illuminate your own soul. Moses and Yosef, Joseph, and King David, all three righteous people, that for us, they, those three, are all representing the leaders of Am Israel. They were all the light of the generation in their time. They were all in the aspect of Mashiach. All three passed away in Shabbat afternoon, in time of Mincha, in the seventh day of the week. What time is that? That time is called Rava de Ravin, the will of all will, Ratzon Shebaretzonot. That's the place that people has the greatest potential to want Hashem with all their hearts. And when they want Hashem with all their hearts, so Hashem wants them with all His heart. Means when you desire Hashem, Hashem desires you. And the opposite direction is the same as well. When Hashem wants you, that's the time that you want Hashem. If Hashem doesn't want you, you don't want Hashem. That's exactly what that happens with people that are sinning. If a person now is sinning, I, what's that supposed to happen to a sinner is that husks and coverings going to block his spiritual eyes. And he won't desire Hashem anymore. But I'm asking you, after you fail, are you forgetting Hashem? Or that your heart is breaking and you want Hashem even more? You want Hashem even more. After your humiliations, after your downs, after your disappointments, what that happens to you is that you feel so wrong, you feel so awful, that you desire to change now. That's supposed to be the reward for people that are doing mitzvah, for people that are doing good. They need to be rewarded with amazing will, with holy desire to come closer to Hashem and to do great things in the world. That's supposed to be a reward. That's not punishment of a sin or for a sin on a crime. For sure not. So what's going on in this world? What that goes on in this world is the Creator not scared from your physicality. When you fail physically, it doesn't mean that you failed spiritually. When you achieve something spiritually, not always you're going to see the physical results to that thing. Sometimes when you are being humbled by life, you are in such high level of progress spiritually, you're in such divine process of growth that you're going so high to high divine places, but you can't see no results on your flesh, not in your bank account, not in front of the mirror. You won't see physical results because those 
amazing spiritual success takes place in a spiritual dimension inside your soul where you are attached to Hashem. You're not attached to Hashem with your flesh. You can see Hashem through the flesh when you desire. Like the verse is saying, Mi besari eloka. I can see the Creator through my flesh, through my body, through the world. I can see that it's all heavenly, that it's all showing Hashem's greatness. Wonderful, you can see, but you cannot get into it. You cannot go through the apple, you cannot go through the walls, you cannot eat the trees, you cannot feel the ground. All those things are only to remind you to look deep into yourself. The most beautiful sunset or sunrise, the most amazing view, you cannot drink the ocean, you cannot eat the clouds, you can't do anything with it except of being inspired spiritually. To understand that the same reflection of this magnificent world is reflecting your inside. That inside of you there is a godly soul. The same soul that is reviving, that gives life to all creation. Those trees are only physical. But spiritually they grow inside of you. And when you're growing spiritually, you give power to those palm trees to grow around you. Those cedar trees to grow. Those amazing fruits to be sweet and colorful and amazing. It's the result of your spiritual growth. You and your effort putting sweetness in the fruits. Good smell in the flowers. Give life to cute animals to run in the fields, to enjoy life, to see another sunrise and to enjoy another sunset. You might not be aware to your positive effect because your eyes are still looking outside. But when you're going to look deep inside, you're going to see that the wide world circles and wheels are surrounding and running and working based on your energy. And you are running the world because your soul is the soul of the Creator. And the Creator is accomplishing and completing His work through you, through me, through us. And we are important. And Mashiach will reveal our greatness and our glory. That we are running the world. But not only on the positive side. Also all the murders and all the rapes and all the abusements and all the horrible humiliations and all the poverty and the hunger and the blood and the bloodshed and all kinds of pain and sorrow and grief are also reflecting our bad attributes, our sadnesses. When you're angry in your house and you kick something, you don't know what happened in that moment in Taiwan. You don't know what happened in Tel Aviv. A person might be stabbed because of your anger. A person could have been run by a car because of your negativity. A person may be jumped from a bridge because of your depression and your sadness. And even though that it's a huge responsibility, there is only one path. There is only one way. And it's to work on ourselves with no end to benefit ourselves, to become better people, to be kind, more kind, to be more nice, to be more polite, to hold ourselves, to hold our breath. Not to follow our fears and our imagination. And to be strong. And to fight for the good. And to protect the weak. Because when you save one person's life, in that moment you might redeem hundreds of thousands of people in another country. In a third world, world uh, country. In a different place in the world that is receiving the energy through you. When you give charity, the verse is saying, Tzedakat atzil mimavet, charity will save from death. When you give charity, even a penny for charity, one penny, one cent you give in the charity box, you give to some person that's stuck without ten cents, without a penny, you give it to someone, that's charity. The verse is testifying and telling you, listen, when you gave that charity, you saved life. 
Now you might not notice that, but there was a person that was about to cross the street in India, in Zimbabwe, in, Te in Tehran. You don't know him, you never met him, but he receives his life through you. And when you gave that charity, suddenly he looked to his left and recognized that truck. And he just made another step back and saved his life. And you don't know that you saved that person's life. And you know what's more written in the verses? That malbin shinaim mechalav, that if you shown your white teeth while smiling to a person, it's even greater than to give charity, than to water someone, to give him drink milk. If you smile to something, someone, it's even greater than to give charity. Means that if you smiled to someone, you did something that is greater than to save one person's life. What can be more great than to save a person's life? To save a whole family from rolling over the cliff, from drowning together in the sea, from I don't know what can happen to a whole family, to die in a terror attack or whatever. And you spared their life with your smile that you decided to go and to smile and to be positive to people and to be nice and to be honest. And when you're saying the truth, you're revealing the Creator's light in the world. And when you're lying, you're blocking the eyes of the world from seeing the truth. And I'm not talking about lies in Crown Heights, in the peak of the world. I'm talking about if someone asks you a tiniest question and you choose to lie. In that moment, you twisted the truth. Even if he asks you the most simple question, where are you from, and you're from New York, and you're going to answer with no reason from Jersey, there's no reason for that lie. And when you made that lie, you just twisted reality. And you might twisted reality to thousands of souls that depends on you. But when you answered the truth, yes, I'm from here, yes, I'm from there, yes, I don't have a job right now, no, I'm still not married, no, I am struggling, and you were honest, you gave the strength and the power to thousands of other people to get stronger, because your energy being channeled to them, and that is your reward, because when you're going with that light of being honest, of being a person of truth, of being positive, of shining and illuminate, illuminating the world with the light of your belief, of your soul that is shining from within, in that time you are making for yourselves more students, more people that are following you, more people that are enjoying your light, and then you can start experiencing the world through their eyes, through the eyes of their minds. Because like we said in the beginning of this talk, when you give someone something and he achieves something because of your grace, because of your generosity, in that moment, all of his success becomes your success. And suddenly you're happy and you don't know why. You just feel good with yourself and you're just being positive and you're able to do more. And you have more strength and you desire to learn more. And you go and you're able to meditate and you're able to talk and to do Hidbode Duyot and to pray. And suddenly you understand more verses and you can learn more. And you have more skills and more power to talk to people. And you see that you have more effect on other people and all that strength is already the fruits that you're harvesting from those seeds that you planted in the souls of those ones that are channeled to you, that are receiving their life through you. Because all this world is an oak, is a tree with branches, and everyone are connected to each other. And if you move one branch strong enough, you're going to see that all the tree will move. You pull it from one side to a positive direction, all the tree will move to that place. And if you take it low, if you try to break it, you're going to affect and make all the tree weak. When you're falling in your mind, when you're falling spiritually, 
Not if you had a physical failure, that you didn't wake up in the morning, that you forgot a meeting, that you messed up, that you said something wrong. Those are nonsense. Those are only challenges that are coming to check your level of faith, your understanding in the science of life. If you are well connected to your soul, if you understand that you are a spiritual being or that you are totally disconnected and that every failure is scaring you, oh, I lost, I, I, I was late for the meeting, for sure I'm going to be fired, I won't have my income anymore, I'm going to lose my money, it means I'm going to lose my house, my kids won't going to like me, like you, you lose your mind, you like for nothing, like you missed one train, already the world is dark, and there's no hope, and nothing, like people went through the Holocaust and came back from death to life and established amazing families and made millions of dollars and their children are healthy and growing and like you can ask yourself how. The only answer is because they haven't stopped working. Because they didn't let the darkness take over them and conquer them and break their spirit. And they decided to fight against the darkness and to be strong and to commit themselves to the goals that they set for themselves for life. And we need to do the same. And in our generation, I tell you something that I experience. Even those that are claiming to be believers, even those that are saying, yeah, Mashiach will come and I believe the redemption, whatever. I don't see that in the eyes of people. I don't see that spark. I don't see people going and like, all right, it's coming. I don't see that. Only when they're using a lot of drugs. <laughs> like really in reality, people who claims to have faith are also walking in that negative attitude. Always worried about money, always worried that they haven't learned enough, that they haven't woke up early enough, that they haven't accomplished, that they were not fulfilling their obligations, that they were not Yotzim Yedechova, and all those imaginations. When Hashem is already with you, and you just don't get it. You think that you should climb on that mountain, that Hashem will be there with you. When Hashem is telling you, don't climb that mountain, that... that that mountain can kill you. It, it's too dangerous for you. Moses is able to climb on that mountain. But the rest of the people, they need to stand in the valley to understand that they're not able and not supposed to climb that mountain. Because if you try to climb that mountain, it can kill you. You don't need to climb that mountain. You need to understand that Hashem is coming down to you. That the Spirit of Heaven is shining upon you. You don't need to go over there and to find Hashem. You need to understand that Hashem is with you right now. Where is Hashem? Hashem is everywhere. Okay, so He's with me. What does it mean? Who is Hashem? That's what it means. It means that if you're going to understand who Hashem is, you don't have problems in your life anymore. No more problems. If you understand that the Creator, the one that creates, Whatever he wants, whatever he desires, whatever he feels like, whatever he wants, whatever comes up in his mind, he can create. Suddenly you realize that he, like, he's your homie. He's with you in your house. He's your best friend. He's with you. He's the soul that lives inside of you. He's your breath. He's your oxygen. He's your mind. He's your thoughts. He's talking to you from within. When you understand that and like you jump on it, you grab it and you start talking with it. You start asking him, all right, so what do you want from me? Now we're partners. Let me know what my role is, what my job, what do you want me to do? Tell me and I'm jumping, I'm doing. Tell me how high and I'm jumping. If you come to that understanding and you're committing yourself to the truth, that the Creator is with you. That He's 100% with you. You become one with Him. And on that, the Or Chaim HaKadosh said that you and Hashem are brothers. You and Hashem are partners. You become an equal partner, like a brother, with the Creator of the world. 
כי תראה שור אחיך, the אור החיים הקדוש interpret that verse. If you see the animal of your brother, and the אור החיים הקדוש is explaining, who is that animal? Those lost souls that, that behaves like animals. They belong to your brother. Who is your brother? Hashem, the creator of the world. You must bring them back to your brother. That's what the Or Chaim HaKadosh is saying. Your job, if you saw a lost animal, a lost soul that behave now like an animal, that doesn't recognize its godliness, that thinks that he's an animal, that thinks that he needs to go and sleep around and eat around and do whatever, that's what he feels, that's what he knows. He's an animal. He's part of the, the, the herd. He's a cattle, he's part of those goats, those sheep, those cows, those horses, they act like a donkey sometimes. All right, that person, you saw him, you need to bring him back to your brother, to your brother, to your brother. And who's that brother? It's Hashem. Who is saying that? The Orachayim HaKadosh. Not me. The Orachayim HaKadosh said that. That Hashem is telling you, my brother, I need your help with my children. You became a partner with your brother to collect his children, to bring them back. His children are in his form as well. They're your brothers as well. You're all one family. Jacob called his children my brothers in one of the verses. He's saying, Achai, my brothers, my siblings, they're his children. But he holds them as brothers because they're partners. Children, we're together. It's a war. There's a mission. We're all working. Different units, different departments, different roles, different jobs. It's a company. We're working together. It's a one mission to reveal the light of truth in the world. Now you're going to call it the light of Hashem, the light of God, the light of the Torah. The light is shining from different angles, from different directions, and showing the truth to the world. That's your mission. And you should understand that if that mission been given to you, so it's in your power to complete it, to finish it, to bring a complete redemption. And me, about the redemption, I can talk for hours, and I'm about to talk for hours for thousands of hours. No, really, there's nothing else to talk about. The redemption will take place like I'm trying to wake you up to understand. Like that today you wake up in the morning and you struggle with your shoes and you don't know and you will look for socks and oh, I have a hole in that sock and you're stuck and you need to go and you're in the laundry and you for three days you didn't put the dark things in the laundry. You're struggling with, with, with certain issues on daily problems, right? You want to eat and you're stuck without, um, without bread. You don't have cream cheese. You don't know. Oh, forgot to, I, I forgot that yesterday I ate the last tomato. You, you struggle with every aspect of your life, right? The refrigerator, you need to go and open it and not always it's closed by itself, right? So you struggle in every way. In conversations with people, when you meet, when you need to make money, when you need to go, you need to leave the house. So you need to lock the door like every situation something happens. And when it's winter, it's cold and it's wet. And when it's icy, so you can slip her. And you have issues. And when it's hot, so it's hot and you need to deal with it. Every situation is complex. In the time of redemption, you will live the same life. But all the aspects will shine. You won't have problems anymore. You will eat what you desire. You will want something, you will find it. You will be hungry. There are going to be a meal in front of your eyes being set on the table with happy waiters to come and serve you and not fake waiters. There are people that their desire, that their love is to serve food. You have waiters from birth. People that born to that, that's their joy. Like that you have truck drivers that you will never going to go and drive a truck, but for them it's life. You have people that loves to drive motorcycles. You have people that loves to build 
houses. Really, that's their desire. They feel connected to the stones. They like to, 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 to stir the cement. They like to build. They see that. They design cities. They like those things. It's not your job to like those things. Your job is to find who you are. And in the time of redemption, you will be playing your role in the time of redemption. When you will go to the grocery store, you're going to go and take whatever you need. The person in the grocery store will be happy to give it to you because that's his life. He's a born to be manager store. He loves that work. He's been built and created for that. He likes it. That's what he wants to do. And he will do it with joy. And you will do your job with joy. When he will have an event and he will want a DJ for his son's bar mitzvah, he will contact you and you will be happy to go and celebrate because that's your love. To make people happy and to play exactly the music that they like and you like to see their faces. And that grocery store manager can't do that because it's not him. He has a different role and you need to believe in yours and to allow yourself to be that one. And when the redemption will take place, you will be who you meant to be and everything will go smooth. Everything will go perfectly right. There's going to be a complete harmony between all the particles and creations of the world. Everything will work together. All the animals will smile, will be positive, will work with us together. If you like the sea, in the time of redemption, you're going to go to the sea. When Am Israel went out of Egypt, the sea been opened for them only because that there was no other choice. But in the future to come, the redemption will be complete. Every time that you will want to go to the ocean, the ocean will show that the Creator is the Creator of the world. If you will want to go into the water and that the water will move to the side, it will move for you with no problem. If you will want and desire to see a dolphin, there's going to be a dolphin that waits for you on the shore that is already welcoming you into the water. If you want to play tennis, you'll see tennis courts. Everything that your heart will desire will be in front of you, served on a silver plate, corresponding to your divine desire, to your holy will. Everything, your sunglasses will suit you perfectly. Everything you will want, you will have it on your plate. And that's how the Creator will reveal His complete loving kindness, the ideal desire of the Creator to create the worlds for. For us to recognize His godliness. And you know how much time we're going to enjoy that prosperity, that bounty? For thousand years of Shabbat. It will be perfect for thousand years. And you know what? We're not going to die. Because death will disappear from the world. No one will die anymore. There will be no more poverty, no more sorrow, no more illnesses, no more sicknesses, no more death. Bula mavet la netzach vivula mavet la netzach. The death will disappear. Everyone will stay alive. And you know what's more than that? The resurrection of the dead. You will walk with your ancestors. You will walk with generations that disappeared from earth. You're going to see Jacob and Isaac and Sarah and Miriam the prophet and Esther the queen and Mordechai the Jew. You're going to see all them around you all the time. And all the nations will call Hashem. And all the wide world will walk to Jerusalem. And the temple will be built. And we will all be able to see it. And we will all going to call Hashem in His name. And Hashem will reveal His face to us. So tell me if those religious ones that are talking and talking and talking and talking are living in this dimension that we were just expressing. 
if they really believe in Hashem or that they gave up on it and they just chose to learn or to follow and obey or to be slaves in any aspect of that word. I'm not a slave of no one. I'm not doing things because I'm scared. I'm keeping Shabbat for one reason, because I want to. If I wouldn't want to keep Shabbat, trust me, trust my word, I wouldn't do it. I'm eating kosher because I want to eat kosher. If I would want to eat something else, I would go and eat whatever I want. I'm not working for no one. That's me. I'm keeping Shabbat and I'm eating kosher and I'm celebrating the Jewish holidays and I'm putting tefillin Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam and I'm sitting and teaching my children Mishnah and Gemara and Torah and Prophets and all the scripts and I'm teaching people and I'm wearing tzitzit and I am. And I'm doing whatever I can only because I want to. No one person in the world is forcing me to do those things and especially not Hashem. And if you will ask me, I will tell you the truth. I never felt pressure from heaven ever in my life. I never felt pressured by heaven to be observant. I was only offered. People are pushing. People, horrible. But the Creator is loving and patient. And He is offering and suggesting and always trying to give me the understanding of the greatness of those ones that will follow His advice and those amazing recommendations. But never push, never force. And all those downs and all those difficulties and all those judgments that we're experiencing in life are only tests, are only challenges that are challenging our mindset to ask you what you really desire. Are you a truth seeker or that you're looking for comfort? Are you here to work and to sacrifice your laziness and your bad attributes or that you're here to whine and to complain and always to find a reason to be negative? If you want to be positive and strong, you will find it like diamonds all over the place. Every situation you're going to learn from. You're going to be educated from every life experience. In every moment you're going to experience development and growth. And that's eternal life that you can start living already while you live and captured inside a physical body. You can start living like we are about to live in the redemption day. Eternal life. You can start it right now. If you're going to follow my advice right now and going to start living your life like that, like it's already redemption day, you're not going to die. I promise you, we're all not going to die. We're going to live forever. You remember that song, right? From Fame. I'm gonna live forever. I'm gonna reach to the sky. Fame! Right? You remember? You're a DJ. All right. So we nailed it again. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.